between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and founders, like founders, entrepreneurs of P90X. You know, if you look at Tony Horton, he talks about where he actually started to build the $500 million company, Quest Nutrition, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, where entrepreneurs of six, seven, eight figure businesses come together live and in person every few months to solve their biggest business challenges and leave with lifelong friendships. Check out Rise25.com. It's run by myself and co founder John Corcoran. It's application only. And Ashley will talk a little about her. Um, actual summit, retreat, event in a little bit. Um, today I'm excited. We have Ashley Drummonds, founder of Abs Protein Pancakes. She's been featured on Shark Tank, the Home Shopping Network, Forbes, and many more. In over two years, she sold more than $500,000 worth of pancake mix. And it's not just pancake mix, but it's you'll talk about it. But Ashley, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. I'm excited. You, me too. And you know, there's a couple things that struck me when I did the research. One, ABS does not stand for what people think, right? So talk about what ABS actually stands for and where it comes from. Okay, so ABS does in a sense stands for your six pack ABS. But so what had happened is I was working as a personal trainer in the fitness industry and anybody who's in the fitness industry or who's ever tried to lose weight or tried to get their six pack ABS, they know like first thing you got to do cut out carbs, cut out sugar, cut out processed foods, all these things. And I was doing the same thing. All the good stuff, right? Right. Yeah. And that was actually part of the Shark Tank pinch pitch was we were like, oh, you can have cardboard and vegetables. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And, you know, it's kind of, I mean, to be honest, everybody knows it's kind of like a depressing way to live life because everybody loves food. You love food food, and nobody wants to have to sacrifice their favorite things in order to have the body that they want. So going through a little bit of like my own journey and the journey I was having with my clients, if they're like, yeah, I look great, but I'm starving, I'm miserable, I have no social life, anything like that, it kind of made me do a little bit of soul searching, wanting to, as most entrepreneurs, find a different way of doing things. And I myself, like I hate things like bland vegetables and cardboard bread and like I'm Italian, so I love food. Um, So one of the things I was doing was I was eating this protein pancake recipe I was making for myself every day, not thinking anything of it. Like most great ideas, you're just like, oh, wait, this is something it that can help It was your people. proprietary recipe that you just kind of threw together because you like pancakes though, right? Yeah, yeah, literally. Like I was trying to find a way, no flours, no sugars, no processed ingredients and was mixing up a bunch. I mean, my kitchen was like covered in protein powders. Um, and I was eating it for myself and it was working really well. And then I'd eat it for dessert sometimes. And a lot of my clients started asking of what do you eat for breakfast? Like I'm tired of eating egg whites and tired of my oatmeal and things like that. So started giving it to them and they were seeing results. They were losing weight, but they were also having more success sticking to their nutrition program because they didn't feel like they were being deprived. So the name abs protein pancakes and the slogan I got my abs while eating pancakes is because it's a true story. Like you do stick to your fitness goals and nutrition, but it's an acronym for authentic beauty and strength. And I created it that way because I wanted to help empower people to find a lifestyle and nutrition that worked for them instead of feeling like they had to just follow the typical like protein shake, egg whites, boring vegetables, like things like that. So that's the story behind the name. Now, your journey was, were you competing or did you just want to look good and feel good because that you're in the industry? Um, I wasn't competing. I was actually doing photo shoots here in Tampa. So anybody who's ever done any type of like fitness stuff, they know it's usually at least six weeks of hardcore dieting, hardcore like mm. training. Every, like you have no life, literally, like it's mm. terrible. And I would never recommend it to anybody. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was doing photo shoots and like, Every day, you're just like, oh, you're counting down the days until it's done. 
But then you do the pictures and you you look great, you feel great. Everybody's like, oh my God, what do you do? You look amazing. You're like, don't do it. It's terrible. Right, like right. you're miserable. So it was kind of going through that and just like honestly getting exhausted of going through that vicious cycle of like, I want to look like this, but I don't want to go through that terrible like six to 12 week process yeah. to get that way. So yeah. And I was reading actually, you know, with the I love the bigger message of authentic beauty and strength and, and really part of it is you want to empower women and, and girls, right? Um, so what would you say to young girls um, to help empower them? You know, I have two daughters, uh, two that are very, very okay. young. So, you know, because eventually you're going to be giving speech, big speeches to big groups of people, right? So what, okay. what knowledge do you want to impart to them? Because one of the biggest things that surprised me um, when I was doing the research is you struggle with self-esteem. You said, mm -hmm. you said, tell me about yeah. that. What? Well, so one of the biggest things, and it's so interesting you're saying this because one of the other parts of the business now that we're doing is we're going to schools, middle schools, elementary schools, talking to these young girls yeah. and young guys about like the importance of yeah. having healthy self-esteem, having good nutrition, having good fitness, because one of the things as you read that I struggled with the most is from about, I want to say like seventh to about, seventh grade till about 19, 20 years old, I struggled a lot with accepting how I looked. And it's not so much like, it's not like I was like severely overweight. It's not like right. I was just like, I don't know, like this ugly duckling in my family or anything right. like that. It was more, I was athletic. I was very muscular. I did a lot of sports. I did gymnastics. I was a great athlete, a good student. A great, like I had all these great things right. with my family. Like I came from a great background, but the biggest problem I had was you don't hear too often in media and like homecomings and proms when you're at that very vulnerable age of, hey, it's okay to be athletic and muscular and that's beautiful. Mm. You see the girls who are skinny and right. size zero, size two, all those things. And you think that something's wrong with you, even though like nine times out of 10, it's like, no, like stay, keep doing what you're doing. You're a great athlete. Right. And it really kind of hit me that it was something that I wanted to do to help people is because even when I was training seven, eight years ago, I would have girls who are 13, 14 years old who like to me looking at them, like you're beautiful, like you're an amazing athlete. Right. And they're coming to me of like, but I want to lose five pounds. And they're so like, you've nothing to lose. Right. So like you're fine. You're great the way you are type of thing. Trust yeah. me. That's the least of your worries. <laughs> um, but so like to the young girls and even like to your daughters, I think the biggest message you can give and anybody can get is you know it's all about like be authentic and true to who you are like don't worry about what your friends look like what girls are getting the attentions from the guys because that's the biggest thing too is they may not be getting the same attention that these younger prettier quote unquote girls are getting even though they're beautiful in their own way and I think that's great that you're a dad and you even care about that because you're going to be the biggest influence and I was fortunate that I had a great dad that helped me through that and like taught me to be an athlete. But as far as empowering women, I think that that never really truly goes away because women are always struggling with their body image. Mm -hmm. But the most important thing we can do is just like really accepting and understanding that one, your body's always going to change, whether it goes from being athletic to being a little more curvy, to being a mom, to being a grandmother, whatever it might be. And that's the whole journey of life is practicing self-love, practicing being authentic and true to yourself. Because like I've told people before, however you feel and see yourself is how the rest of the world is going to see right. you as well. So so that's when you go into the schools, that's the biggest message that yeah. uh, you convey. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because I mean, it's so it's terrible. There's a lot of girls that are so beautiful and young and vulnerable who are developing eating disorders and like yeah, getting in terrible. Yeah, getting in terrible relationship situations because of low self-esteem and just making poor choices because they're honestly like they're searching for acceptance and love somewhere. And so any yeah. little way they think they can get it. So going to these girls and teaching them, especially if they don't have like a positive female figure in their life, that's giving them that reinforcement and positive encouragement to accept yeah. who they are. So it's all about like we teach self love. We teach them what really is healthy nutrition how to not worry so much about what the doctors teach with yeah. BMI and whatnot, but like focus on how you feel, focus on the thoughts you tell yeah. yourself and focus on the messages that you continually to feed yourself and don't worry about what anybody else thinks. So yeah, that's yeah. what we try and teach the kids. Yeah. I mean, one, there's many reasons I was surprised about that, but one is you're very, you come across very confident, right? So <laughs> yeah. how did it affect you? 
I mean, um, now I'm very confident and that has come through series of poor choices that have led me through my own struggles and soul searching and whatnot. I mean, if you ask any of my coaches through high school and even like yeah. relationships I've been in, I, my boyfriend I have now, I always tell him, I'm like, I don't think he would have liked me back then because like, Why? I was a great athlete, but it's like, I don't know. And I think this is just something girls go through when they find themselves. It's like what everybody else sees for some reason you can't see it. So even though like getting MVPs and I'm like getting scholarships and all this stuff, there was something that I couldn't see it in my so when it came time to like show up at a game or show up to perform or things like that, I was so scared that I wasn't good enough, even though like everything else proved it. And so going through that and like, there's a lot of opportunities I turned down that I wish I would have done athletically and then right. getting in. What, did, I, you, I got what did you excel at? Softball. I was softball. really good at softball. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, but like I got married at a very young age, right out of high school, wasn't the best choice and got divorced really young and just through like a series of events and you eventually get tired of feeling that pain right. that it causes you to look a little bit deeper and finally like throw your hands up of, all right, I'm done. Like I got to yeah. figure this out. And through that and like just learning and I mean, honestly, like it's so much like not going to everybody else, just taking the time to get to know yourself and why you keep repeating patterns and things like that. So that now on the other end, like I can recognize it like in yeah. an instant with anybody of like what the struggle is only because like you recognize your own pain that you've right. been through. So the confidence now comes from really stepping out into my own, trusting yeah. my own instinct and my own journey. Yeah. What did you do? Because part of me thinks, Ashley, oh, my God, they're going to have this no matter what, because, <laughs> you know, you're young. You know, you remember junior. Everyone is awkward in seventh, right. eighth grade, freshman year no matter who it is and the, the social circles and whatever, like, is it a matter of, okay, just wait it out or is there something they can actually do then? How did you come to where you are now? Like, what did you do to, to yeah. you know, get over it? I don't know if it's a well, time thing or, or more than that, you know? I think it's time, yes and no, but at the same time, so there was a very significant point in my life where, like I said, I was very athletic, I was always in sports, and I think sports are an amazing thing for girls, like it really does do a lot, but so when I had gotten married at a very young age, got out of high school, you know how college is, you're figuring out who you are, like what you're right. doing, I wasn't doing any sports, I wasn't doing anything active, I was in this relationship that wasn't healthy, I kind of lost myself a little bit. And so around 20 years old, when I was going through a divorce, which I mean, 20 years old, like, you don't know what's going on. You're like, I don't know who I am. I'm in college. I don't know what to do. And now I'm getting divorced. Like, what am I doing? Like, I don't even know what my major, you know, people don't even know what their major is, exactly. let alone anything else is going on. Yeah. Right. Exactly. College, well, yeah. So one of the, like, I mean, I was so lost on just what am I doing? Like, I feel like I'm already screwing up at such a young age. The only thing I knew to go back to was being an athlete, being strong. I knew I was always really good at that. And so regard, like I remember I like quit my job. I took a break from college, like everything just because I was so confused. And the only thing that was consistent was I was like, well, I remember I used to like being active. So I'm mm. going to get back in the gym and I'm mm. going to try fitness. And as big of a stigma as there is with women and lifting weights, like right. that to this day, I mean, it's been almost 10 years since all that's happened, but to this day, like women lifting weights, they don't understand. Like one, you're not going to get big and bulky and look like a man, right. but two, it does so much more for your inner confidence when you walk in there one day and you can't lift five pounds. And then three weeks later you can lift 10 and then three yeah. weeks later it's you 15. You see the gradual improvement. Yes. Yeah. You feel so much more confident and stronger to where you're doing all these things you've never done athletically, physically, your body's changing that it makes your mind think of, well, I wonder what else I can do in other areas of my life that I never thought I could do before. So for me, the big shift was all fitness, which is why I fell in love with the fitness industry. And it's been such a huge part of my life. And honestly, I feel like if you talk to anybody who's been in the fitness industry, they'll give you a similar message that if it wasn't for this in my life, like everything else would be chaos because it just consistently reminds you of I can do more. I can be strong. I can get through this because five years ago I couldn't even run half a mile and now I'm running three miles. So that is what I would say. Anybody that's got daughters, anybody that is a female is if you're not doing something athletically or in the gym that consistently when everything else in life is falling apart, but you, that's the one thing you have control of 
to keep building your confidence, then you need to get in the gym or work with somebody or do something to better yourself yeah. in that way. Right. And Ashley, I appreciate you being open and talking about this because if someone out there hasn't struggled with some part of self-esteem issues, I don't, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we all have our own skeletons in our closet. Right. So. so thank you for sharing that. And, um, yeah. And I want to go back to the product for a second and okay. the experimentation, right? So you're <laughs> experimenting with this stuff. What did you find was not working? Because then you came to obviously a formula, which you then handed off to a co-packer to produce this for you. But I want to hear about some of the tragic stuff that you probably ate. What did you have to add or subtract? to make it actually not only be healthy, but actually taste good um, early on? Well, so there's thousands of protein pancake recipes out there, and yeah. I've tried probably more than anybody ever has just because I'm a pancake freak. And I mean, it's funny because now when people try the pancakes, they're like, oh, these are actually soft and taste like pancakes. When I try and make them, they're like chewy or they fall apart. So, I mean, I tried, and my poor family, like, I would wake up in the morning, and I'm like, ooh, try this one. Tell me if this tastes good. And they're like, they're God, no. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, there was, like, trying different protein powders, because that's the other thing, too, is people think, like, oh, you just took a protein powder, mixed it up, and you came up with this. But, I mean, think about how many types of protein there are, and some right. are chalky, some are smooth, some are great. So, there were so many that I did, and even flavor-wise, like, Maybe I'll come up with apple pie, and then I would make like apple pie, and it would taste terrible, like chemically and like potpourri almost. So there's a lot of process. The thing is, though, it's a little bit different when I think a lot of people start a business is they come up with like, I want to make a lot of money, and then they try and create an idea. This was something I was already doing in my Solving life. Solving your own pain type of thing. Yeah. yeah. It, it wasn't really, it's not like I was doing it from a business standpoint. I was doing it because I wanted to actually eat something that tasted like pancakes. And then once I was doing it regularly and didn't think anything of it, then I had the aha moment of, oh, maybe this could turn into a product and mm -hmm. a business. And maybe I could actually make money off of this. So right now you have chocolate chip, you have cinnamon swirl and vanilla cake batter, right? Yep, that's And right. what was the original? Those are actually all three of those were original. So they're all at the same time that you launched them at the same time. Yeah. So what would happen is I would make the vanilla cake batter as like my normal every morning one. And then my boyfriend, for example, he'd be like, oh, my favorite's chocolate chips. And then I was like, oh, I wonder how I could add chocolate chips and keep it healthy. So the chocolate chips were sweetened with stevia. So I did that. Then I'd have like my brother or something that's like, oh, you should make something that's like a cinnamon roll. So then I just like add some cinnamon, some stevia, some other stuff. And then out, it was like, oh, you have chocolate, vanilla, and cinnamon. Like, that's perfect. So the core, those are the core flavors. Right? Yeah, those are the core, yeah. So right now, we just talked before we got on, is you tested a new flavor, and you found it did not work. Well, you, I want to hear about how you, okay, what you came up with and why you decided okay. not to release it. You know, because that's, I'm sure you get all these yeah. ideas. Like, you could have your mom, your dad, all these people saying, I want this flavor, this flavor. Before you know yeah. it, you have a thousand different flavors. But but it's obviously costly and hard to do that. So, talk about the latest. Well, what, so what actually, call? like, six months ago, I started working on a pum pumpkin spice for holidays, for Thanksgiving, because yeah. it's such a huge yeah. thing. There's some recipe on your site, I think, or some recipe I saw, it was like a pumpkin protein bar. Oh, yeah. Those are actually I, really good. Yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, I create like random recipes all right. the time. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the next product, right. but I right. just like to help It looked good. It was like really tasty on the page. No, so, yeah. you should try it. Like it actually tastes like pumpkin cheesecake. Like it doesn't taste like it's protein at all. Um, but yes, yeah, because it's the fall and everybody loves pumpkin, I decided like six months, and I love pumpkin too. Six months ago, I was like, I'm making a pumpkin spice pancake recipe. And of course, everybody's like, you should make banana nut and blueberry and all this stuff. But the problem that I've been coming up against yeah. is it's very important for me to stick to the overall mission behind the brand, which is keeping things all natural, healthy, gluten free, yeah. things like that. Right. Then to just be knocking out flavor after flavor, because I mean, not bad mouthing people, but there's certain brands who every month it's like a new flavor is coming out. And even yesterday I was at the store and somebody's like, Hey, it's a new flavor. Do you want to try it? And I'm like, they came out with like three last month, but then when you start looking at the ingredients and these companies are getting so big and so big that they're like putting like sucralose and maltodextrin and like all these like artificial sweeteners and you're like, no, like you used to be natural. Why are right. you doing this? 
So anyway, so well, certain six flavors, months ago, you have to add in other things to make them taste better, and so it affects exactly. the it affects the whole uh, the whole food ingredients of it. Right, exactly. Yeah. And like I think that's the difference is like I start I created, I mean, we're on like sample number six right now for the pumpkin spice. Yeah. And I have it in my pantry, and like mixing it up and it tastes like pumpkin spice, but it's like I don't know, like I'm not confident releasing something that I don't think mm. people would love, but also it's like, well, we could add some sucralose to it and make it a little bit sweeter and like that's yeah. more important to me is like just testing things out, getting the formula right and getting the flavor right without yeah. having to use that so even the blueberry people are like you should make a blueberry pancake i'm like i can't put real blueberries in there without using preservatives without going through like this whole processing thing and i don't want to do that to you like i already know what happens when people go through that so i mean worked on pumpkin spice was going to come out with like a chocolate mint for christmas and i mean we're still working on these things right. but until there's a more natural way of doing doing things i'm not going to just throw it out there for the sake of growing a business yeah so ashley is your process like so it doesn't even pass the ashley test right, right. for this so if it passes your test what's the next step is it okay if i like it, i'm just gonna release it or do you have certain people come and test it what's your how do you how do you do that my family is still my guinea pig tester so right. i mean a lot of times what happens is i'll make it and i'll do some past in regards to like I'll send out some social media or email stuff of like hey we're thinking of releasing these three new flavors which one would you prefer and it's not so much a taste thing for me because I feel like the taste is easy like I, I had my boyfriend try it my family they're like oh yeah this tastes pretty good it's more of like they always say in business you have the CEO the entrepreneur and the artist well I'm kind of the entrepreneur and the artist side where like from a food perspective it's like if you create something and it's not like perfect for the experience that you want you're not going to send it out. So even though they're like, mm. oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm like, no, you're not like amazed by it. Like right. I need you to just love it. Right. So usually if it does, like with once the chocolate chip, my family is not super into like fitness and yeah, protein. Which is good. Right. Because yeah. I wanted the normal consumer to enjoy it. Right. So as soon as I got like I gave my brother and my dad who they love like chocolate chip anything. As soon as they tried the chocolate chip flavor and had it and they were like, Oh my God, that's one of the protein pancakes. I was like, you love it. Okay, that's it. Like we have it. Like that was like the stamp of approval. So yeah. Yeah, talk about the process and how you found a co-packer and then, because there's a difference between you making it individually and handing it off and actually doing it probably right. on a broader scale. So everybody always asks that, of how did you know where to get a co-packer? How did you know how to find a fulfillment warehouse? All this stuff. I think that is where the power of Google and the internet comes into play. So I actually read The 4-Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss who talks all about like his whole thing is about automating as much as possible so that way you can live a more fulfilling life. So I mean I read that book multiple times and like I saw this little diagram of the process of like you have a customer order, it goes to a VA, it goes to the fulfillment lab, like all this stuff and I didn't understand it but so I started Googling like what is a co-packer? How does this work? And originally I was here, I'm here in Tampa now, but when I started it, I was in Tampa and then I moved to California and then came back to Tampa. So, I mean, I was Googling like, like protein manufacturers in Tampa, co-packers in Tampa, and I went to probably six of them. And yeah. I mean, it was such an endless process because one, you have no business, so nobody believes you that this product's gonna sell, so they don't wanna take the risk of right. producing all this product. So I mean, I was going like meeting with people every single week, taking my recipe, signing non-disclosures of, hey, like I promise, like this is going to take off. And of course, when you're talking to businesses and you're like, I just have a feeling it's going to do good. They're like, that's great, but you have no numbers. <laughs> so I'm like trying to find which, somebody. Right. Which you learn like, from I Shark hope... Tank, right? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Like somebody believe in me. Um yeah. So, and I mean, the other problem you have is too, is like when you're starting out and you're not doing thousands upon thousands of orders is nobody's going to let you run their it's expensive machine. expensive too. Right. If you're like, oh, I just want to do 200, they're like 200, like make them yourself. I'm not running that. So, I mean, it was, it was a long process. It took me three or four months. And then fortunately through the fitness industry, I had a friend in San Diego who has a protein shake. It's called Fit 365 Protein Shakes. Okay. And through a series of acquaintances and just getting connected, I had reached out to him and I was like, hey, you have a protein product as well. I know like we're in similar phases. 
who are you using as your co-packer? And we met up one day for breakfast or something. And he was like, this is a co-packer that I use. It's a small kind of like, not startup, but they just kind of branched off of a larger one to create their own. You can tell them I sent you, try using them. Because my product's different. Like I use ingredients that are also baking ingredients. So to go to like a protein nutritional supplier and be like, hey, I also need you to get some coconut flour, some stevia. It's a little bit different. But fortunately... I went to these people, met with them. The other thing that launched it too is there's a very big fitness influencer called Dana Lynn Bailey. Called. It's a person. Right. She is Dana Lynn Bailey and she had bought the pancakes and I had no idea and she's got millions of followers. Mm. Made a post on social media and like exploded the business from the start, which of course you're getting like thousands of orders. You're like, I can't hand mix all these. So you had to find the solution. Right. I was on like a week time crunch of I had to find a coat packer, had to find it fast because I know like how long these customers will wait before they'll start asking for refunds. Right. So I was about to sign a contract with one company that was way overcharging me. I'm talking like double to three times what I pay now, but I was kind of in a dilemma. I, it was either them or nothing. Yeah. You wanted customer happiness. Yeah. Right. So it was like, all right, maybe I can just take a cut on this. And like, I met my friend, he suggested this other co-packer and I went to them like within the same day I was going to sign this other contract and like explained it. I was like, I will stick with you guys for as long as I need to. Here's how much I need. This is all I have. And I mean, signed the contract that day and they got the orders going and that was two, two and a half years ago. And I've been using them ever since. So I mean, finding a co-packer. Oh my God. Yeah. I believe in like synchronicities and life working things out and everything. But I mean, finding it like truly Google network, ask anybody and everybody. Like I think so many people are intimidated by other brands and people who are successful. Like I even remember calling, um, the God, Shannon and Ron with quest nutrition two years ago when I was starting it. Like I stalked her on Facebook and was like, Hey, I got some questions for you. I'm a little personal trainer here in Tampa. I have an idea, which I'm sure they get that stuff all the time. Yeah, but I mean, I never like, they call it, you know, they say ignorance is bliss. Like I didn't care. I never cared yeah. what people thought. It was just like, you've done something I want to do. Can I get some help? Right. From you? Exactly. What yeah. was the first run? How many bags did you run? on the? First, I think it was 1500. Okay. Yeah, I think it was right under 2000 because I had to have all three flavors and the minimums they would do was 500 right. a piece. Yeah. What's the turnaround time? Like when you go, okay, I need this. I have customers. How fast can they can they get it, it to? It's about four weeks. Four it depends. Weeks. I mean, if it's like a large, large order, like we really just built up inventory when we found out we were airing on Shark Tank. So yeah. for that, it took a little bit longer. How you decide, because that's a risk too, right? So oh my gosh, how do you yeah. decide oh. how much to order ahead of time? Because how do you project? Do you talk to other Shark Tank, people on Shark Tank? I mean, how do you even project that? Yeah. So ours was kind of a tricky situation because with Shark Tank, they give you two weeks ahead of time of your air date yeah. to give you even though two weeks is not enough time. They're like, we'll give you two weeks, let you know. By the so way, can- yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they gave us our two weeks the week before Christmas. So the week before really? Christmas. Wow. So we, it was crazy. What if you would weeks. be in Mexico or something? You're like, okay, cancel everything, yeah. Right, well, plus businesses are closed. So we had the whole week of Christmas, the whole week of New Year's, mm, nobody's working, and they're right. like, you're airing January 5th. And you're like, this is amazing, but where are we going to get product from? Um, so yeah, we had, fortunately the day that we filmed, we had a couple other businesses that were backstage that filmed the same day we did who had already aired. So we're calling, sending emails, reaching out to people like crazy of like, how many orders did you get? How much should we do? Like, we're trying to figure this out. I don't know what to do. And of course, like at this point we had already done a due diligence process with Damon. And so like, we're on the phone with Damon's team of, we don't know how much to order, like help us figure this out. Yeah. The problem is you aired like six months after your, you actually recorded, right? Right. So yeah. we recorded, we filmed at the end of June of 2015, we aired January 5th of 2016. So there's a long process of just getting things in order, right. but it's so hard. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It was a shot in the dark because there's some companies who really are an overnight success. Like overnight, they make a million dollars, like as crazy as that sounds. But then there's other companies who overnight, they make a thousand dollars. Like it's so just That's weird. You know, I know. And it, I mean, 
from a business standpoint, it's all your price point. It's your price point. It's when a are mass you appeal airing, type of thing. Right. Are you airing also while there's a football game going on? Are you airing while there's a presidential campaign going on? Or do you just have the whole world's attention? Yeah. So, I mean, it all just, right. it depends. So, cause I mean, I had other friends who had similar products and like, our numbers were totally off, even though it's the exact same things. So we really just took like, I think we took six months worth of sales, figured out how many units we sold on that, and that's what we ordered. And even with that, we did that, and I think it took two months for our customers to get all their orders, but fortunately they were very patient. But that's all you can really do, because like, it's totally a shot in the dark. You have no idea. Yeah, so you averaged about six months of sales, and that's kind of what you estimated for this. Because it's a large yeah. financial investment. If it doesn't hit that mark, then you're left with yeah. all this inventory. Right, exactly, yeah. Um, but I mean, and that's the other thing that's so like, everybody wants to be on Shark Tank, and I think for some, for our businesses, it was the right opportunity. For other businesses, yeah. I don't think they're ready for it and to be there, but that's the thing too, is you go to air on Shark Tank, and you have this amazing opportunity come up, but they warn you up to like an hour before your episode's supposed to air. So you're trying to like check your website, all this stuff, an hour before, and they're like, hey, if some random hurricanes decides to hit and we got to go to like an emergency broadcast, that's it. Your episode doesn't go. So, I mean, it's the most stressful thing in the world right. to do. Right. But, I mean, it all goes back to like you got to trust your gut. You got to go with your intuition if it feels right. And from the beginning, like the very – it took a year and a half for all of this to happen. Yeah. From the very beginning, and I say in all interviews because I think it's important for entrepreneurs, there was never any guarantee, just like there's never a guarantee in business – but you just have to, and like I think the sharks even talk about this, like you have to go with your gut in everything. Even if the whole world is telling you it's wrong, but you have such a strong instinct of like, no, like I just feel like this is gonna work, that's what you have to go with. And like from the mm. beginning of the application all the way to like every week, they're like, you may not be picked, you may not air, you may not make it. Right. It's still, it was like, okay, maybe for other entrepreneurs, but I know this is gonna work. So, I mean, that's all you can do really, is just yeah. like trust your gut, go with your yeah. instinct. Yeah, I think, you know, Ashley, it's interesting. All of the, you know, if you watch, people go back and watch the episode, you know, people are very impressed with the, um, you know, from zero in about a year, you went from zero to over six figures with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I want to talk about that for a second. Um, what worked best for you uh, for that? And then I want to talk about post Shark Tank and, and what happened. Yeah, so one of the things that we always get asked is, were you successful before Shark Tank or did Shark Tank make you successful? Yeah. And the biggest thing is, like you said, from before a year hit. So we went on Shark Tank right around our year marker. Before that, though, we had already hit six figures. Yeah. Shark Tank, I say, has a huge power and like a huge effect on your business. But I think more importantly, what it does is it just sets things into motion faster. Mm -hmm. So it basically amplifies what you're already doing doing in your business. Yeah. So from month one to getting and airing on Shark Tank, the biggest thing that worked for me is I didn't know anything about online marketing. I didn't know anything about email, social media marketing, but I'm really good at observing and following trends. And so when I first started the pancakes, I mean, before I had packaging, before I had a website or anything like that, I, I mean, Instagram, for example, Instagram, Facebook, all these social media platforms, seeing how many like likes would come through, how much engagement I was getting on my own personal stuff just by using like one hashtag. Like mm -hmm. if I made a post and didn't put any hashtag, and then the next post I put like hashtag fitness. And then it's like, oh, you have 150 likes now. Mm -hmm. I saw the free marketing that came from that because in the beginning nobody really, unless I mean you have like a huge capital investment, nobody has the money to spend on thousands of dollars of advertising. Yeah, you're bootstrapping, and, yeah. Right, yeah, you're doing what you can. So, I picked onto that very quickly and I started coming up with a campaign schedule for myself. And I mean, the whole, like the followers don't know this, but I knew like psychologically people get used to seeing content at certain times of the day. And if right. it's not there, you kind of lose those customers. So I was doing 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. every single day, twice a day when people are up in the morning, eating breakfast, scrolling through That's social smart. media. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at night, well, you ask yourself, like, when am I on my phone looking at social media? And then at night, you get home from work, you're either having dinner or you're watching the news or whatever, scrolling on social media. So 6 a.m., 6 p.m., and I mean, I was so obsessive about it. Like, we, 
my boyfriend would always make fun of me because I would be laying in bed. I'm like, it's 6.15. I got to make my post. And he's like, oh, my God. I'm like, I got to get it up there. But right. so I did that. That's great. Yeah. A self-imposed yeah. deadline because they're expecting it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And a lot of people do it with email marketing. It just depends on your demographic. Like with mine, with the fitness industry, I know social media is huge. Pictures. Yeah. People. Yeah. Yes. They're going to respond to a social media post way more than they're going to respond to an email. Um, but so I did that. 6 a.m., 6 p.m. every single day. And then one of the other huge things which helped a lot is I actually took the time to research trending hashtags specifically to my demographics. So mm. what are the top 10 fitness hashtags, That's nutrition awesome. hashtags? Yeah. yeah. And then the pancake. I love to hear this stuff because people think, oh, it just land like you put it out there and you just started it just happened. selling. Right. I mean, the reality is there's a lot of um, hustle and work yes. and grind that goes into it. There's Well, I think the biggest thing is like, even now, like there's other things that we're working on launching now. And it's like the work is simple. It's the discipline and the consistency to continue to do it every single day. It's like that with anything in life. Like same thing with fitness. You don't just wake up with a six pack. It's the consistency of what you're doing. Right. So research the hashtags. And even now I have a note in my phone of the hashtags that I use yeah. from day one that now, fortunately now I have a social media manager. But even to this day, like we use the exact same hashtags we used at the beginning and it just continues to grow. So yeah. that was the second thing that I did that really grew yeah. things. Third thing, like I said, I was never afraid to be told no or I didn't care about what people thought. So I reached out to other brands who had similar um, markets or customers as I did. Yeah. Like one of our great friends and a good brand that we've aligned with is like Detour Bar and Kill Cliff and Natural Grips. Like all these people that are making a positive impact in the fitness industry. Yeah. Reach out to them and just like offer like, hey, do you want to do a cross promotion? Like like right now, we do that even to this day. Yeah, I think uh, I saw the, uh, the Kill Cliff somewhere on your site. Yeah. Yeah, Kill Cliff is a great brand. And I mean, it's a product that I use myself and so many people in the fitness industry use. But like, for example, they have a great replacement yeah. coffee drink yeah. that's natural. It's good for recovery. And we have pancakes. So we're like, hey, let's do coffee and pancakes. Yeah. This will be great. So, I mean, that yeah. from the very beginning, though, like I, I think I have a good introduction for you, actually. So remind <laughs> me afterwards. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, but like somebody I was doing another podcast and like one of the things is somebody asked of like, how do you aren't you scared to reach out to like if I had 100 followers and this brand has 100,000, were you scared? And yeah. I mean, honestly, logical question. I mean, it's scared. Yeah. I don't know if it's scared, but like why is it's not an even, you know, even exchange. Right. Aren't you, know. you intimidated? Like, why would they help you? And honestly, like, I think it's your approach. If you come across expecting things to be handed out to exactly. you. Exactly. You just yeah, want to then, deliver value to them. Right. Then no. Yeah. Like, I have people that reach out to me now and it's like, this is like such a copy and paste email. Like, you're not even taking the time to, like, be sincere in what you're saying. So I think people respond to just be yourself and, like, be honest. Like, it's so far and few between the people who actually take the time to write an email or pick up the phone and right. things like that. Right. And I'll always respect somebody who gives right. me the time of day for the relationship other than just like some email broadcast that you sent out right. to me. Right. So, it so seems I mean, so simple, but unfortunately right. it's, it's all too common. Well, and I think that's the thing too, is like people forget that all of these brands started exactly where you're starting. So if you're honest, your story and you explain like this is who I am this is what yeah. I want to do but also give them the respect of I value your brand this is why I connected with you because I love your messaging things like that yeah even if it's one post like most brands even now like I've had people reach out who have like 300 followers but if it's a similar message they have a good customer service process and it's something that like I feel like would be a good alignment for the brand yeah yeah we'll do we'll exchange some product we'll take some of your product take a picture and make a post like that has built the brand so much of just strategic alliances yeah. with other brands. But also, I mean, coming back to actually caring about your customers, caring yeah. about your product, caring about your business, like that it's the basics. Like it sounds like you said, it sounds so simple, but people get so caught up in when you get so big, so fast and all this stuff. It's like, you don't even know, do you know one customer's name? Do you know like one thing that they love? Yeah. Have you seen any of their, and even yesterday, it's funny because I was texting my social media girl because we were getting all these tags on Instagram and she wasn't going through commenting like, hey, thank you so much for sharing this. 
And so I did it and I was like, hey, don't forget, like, make sure you show appreciation for the people the who individuals. are representing your product. Yes, yeah. these are people that are basically sharing the love for your product. So I think it just comes down to that and that's what's always worked. Yeah. No, Ashley, thank you. That's worth its weight in gold. I mean, the cross finding the products and cross promotion, just reaching out to people who are doing what mm -hmm. you want to do. Um, and talk about the behind the scenes the infrastructure right so the software okay. and the stuff that you you use like um yeah. the shopping cart or the the software platform what because th there's a whole technology side of this oh, right yeah. you're not just you're the entrepreneur you're running the business you're the salesperson and now you are the yeah. chief technologist so what are some of oh, the things gosh, you yeah. have in place for that well, so first off, I feel like there's the whole analogy of like, what is it, paralysis analysis? Yeah. People get so caught up in starting up and there's 100,000 different apps you can use and things like that. But specifically, so there's two things I would say. If you have a physical product, like the pancakes where like people, you're taking customer information and you're shipping them something, mm -hmm. Shopify, hands down, yeah. has been the best thing in I the world. I thought it looked like a Shopify, yeah. It is, and I've used other platforms, but Shopify, their yeah. customer service. I mean, you can call somebody and you'll 24 get- 24 hours a day. Game. Yes, yeah. they are on the other line like, yeah, sure, let me help you through this, walk you through this, and they're always like willing to help. So Shopify is the, e plus they are the most easy to integrate with any other platform. Like hmm. with my fulfillment center that I have, sometimes it can get hard with API keys and all these different coding and whatnot. Shopify is so easy with just, it doesn't matter who you use, they'll integrate with it. They'll integrate with Amazon, whatever. So I would say Shopify for a shopping cart. Yeah. Um, on the back end, so like capturing customer information, follow-up marketing, follow-up just value of content and things like that. I actually use Aweber as my email marketing I like platform. Aweber, yeah. Yeah, Aweber is a good one. It's, I mean, there's so many of them, and like I've heard good things about Mailchimp. Right. There's right. Click Funnels, like all this stuff. But I mean, I've had Aweber since the beginning, and in all honesty, it's because I'm lazy with email marketing, and I don't want to learn a whole other platform. Yeah, yeah. But and yeah, it's simple. It's not all these complicated. It's it's very straightforward. Right. So you have Shopify, Aweber, any other key tools or softwares that you, you use on a daily or weekly basis? Yes. Um, all of social media marketing is ran through Hootsuite. Hootsuite, okay. Yeah, to schedule it out just because it gets – that way you're not logging in and out of five different platforms. You can yeah. schedule limitlessly for months and months on advance. So yeah, Hootsuite yeah. is great and I think it's only like $9 a month. So even yeah. if you're in startup, it's good. Yeah, there's a bunch. I mean, Buffer people use, Edgar people use, Meet Edgar yeah. people use. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. So, yeah, Hootsuite, Shopify, Aweber. Um, on the, that's on the pancake side. On the other side, so like I have the site AshleyDrummonds.com yes. um, that's got a lot of content. That's all WordPress. I don't have to use anything with mm -hmm. that because mm -hmm. WordPress has so many things already built into it that I think WordPress, if you're not doing physical products you're doing digital products that's the best way to go yeah yeah you can i mean you can just continue to add and add and add and add and it's so easy to use yeah so many questions so little time ash i'm looking up we that's have three okay. minutes i'm like we haven't talked about hsn we haven't talked about shark tank <laughs> that much um, It's okay. so i guess talk about post shark tank for a second what ended up happening so you had so, six months of, of uh inventory Right. So within, uh, like I told you before, we can't say exact numbers, sure. but so within like a week of the, the airing, because you have like four different time zones, I think that it airs through. And then you have like the trickle effect of like, if it was on a Friday, people DVR, watch it Saturday, right, Sunday, Monday. Right, right. Um, so for that week, they always say like, you can really figure out your launch the seven days from your air date. I think we did our entire previous year's mm. revenue in wow. that week. Wow. So, Congrats. I mean, that's, that's awesome. just because of the exposure. That has nothing yeah. to do with, like, Damon, the stuff he's done since then. That's just from airing. Yeah. Um, we ended up getting a deal with Damon John, yeah. FUBU founder, and it's been great. Like, honestly, there's a lot of different things. Some people have, they because you don't know. You're not allowed to talk to other entrepreneurs about their investor. You're not allowed to talk about your experience. That's all the confidentiality agreements. Yeah. But some people, they talk about how their investor is very hands-off. They just kind of, yeah. like, are there if you need them. Damon's team is very hands-on. I mean, every yeah. week I'm getting emails. Every time an opportunity comes up that aligns with the ABS brand, they send it over to us. Like, That's great. And they, the very first thing that they aligned us with was HSN. That was a month or so after mm. 
the Shark Tank airing. So it was like airing on Shark Tank, HSN, like things just taking off like crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's been amazing. And I mean, even now, like we're doing a launch with Zoo Lily next week because of them. So it's been awesome. What's um, some good advice you've gotten from Damon? Um, hmm. You know, actually, it's nothing like huge and like anything new epiphany wise. I mean, the guy knows a ton, but I mean, honestly, mm. like he sent us an email, I think it was last week, and it was just something so simple of like hey don't forget the process that you came through with shark tank by supporting other entrepreneurs and the whole thing was just like supporting shark tank like sharing this platform that has given us such leverage and just yeah. remembering to give back and that so his whole message was just about hey even though like i know we're all growing and we're getting exposure and we're busy in our businesses let's remember where we came from and continue yeah. to share that moving forward it was the whole pay it forward analogy so i mean i think it's just refreshing to see somebody on like his success level, who's got so much going on, but to still come back down to a humble beginning of like, hey, don't forget, yeah. keep paying it forward to everybody else. Yeah. So last question, Ashley, since we're right at the, the time, uh, thank you so much, first of all. Yeah. Um, I always ask, since it's Inspired Insider, what's been the lowest point in the business and what's been the highest point for you? Well, highest point I would say has been Shark Tank. Yeah. Shark Tank, everything that's come from Shark Tank has been the highest point. And I think like it just continues to get better and better. And especially now, like now because of the platform that Shark Tank has given, it now gives us these opportunities like talking to kids at schools and now mm. like helping women with their businesses and whatnot. Mm. So I mean that all those are all high points. The lowest point for me, it wasn't necessarily, I mean, it wasn't necessarily in the business, like something bad had happened was I had moved out to California by myself. And I remember like, I didn't have a co-packer lined up. All these orders were coming in. I knew I had to fill some of them on my own. And I mean, I would like no family, no friends, no employees. It was that like defining moment where you're just like, it is just me. I'm either going to fail the lonely right world. now. <laughs> yes. I'm going to fail right now and I'm going to sit here in a corner and just cry about how I'm terrible at life or I'm going to really step into who I truly am and my strength. Yeah. And I think that was like, I don't know, I think everybody has those moments multiple times in their life where like this is the point where you either step up and move forward or you're yeah. going to completely fall apart. And I remember yeah. like sitting there and I probably cried and had wine way too much that week to try and deal with all of right. it. But I remember feeling like very just exhausted and I don't know if I can do this and is this really going to be everything that I think it is or am I just like making up something in my mind and of course like that day I was like I just need to go work out and I would go work out right. and then as soon as the I was savior. done I was like yeah. all right I'm ready like I can do this so I think right. that would be the lowest point is especially like people don't understand how lonely being an entrepreneur can be sometimes when you don't have anybody else that's like helping you in this big dream and vision that you have and I think that just staying true to like your goal and your mission and plus, I mean, it's so important to reach out, out to other people. Yeah. That I think is like the overall message that I had and that other people have said is it's like, what do you do when you're lonely? And it's like, you just got to keep going. Eat pancakes. You just keep moving forward. Keep eating pancakes. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Ashley, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out abs pancakes.com abspancakes.com anywhere else they should we should point people towards online to check uh, you out yeah. or or you know the the product yeah well if anybody has kids or any women who are wanting to learn how to build their own businesses check out ashleydrummonds.com because that's like my other passion we'll product. link that up also yeah, yeah. ashley it's d-r-u-m-m-o-n-d-s yes dot com yep yeah yeah ashley thank you so much Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's been so fun. Yes. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other.